What up, though? Welcome to the Husband Show podcast, where husbands band together and navigate this thing we call marriage through love, life, and laughs. I am your moderator, Perry. And I'm Treble T. Roy. And I'm Vince. All right. We got a special segment for you today, something we're going to try to incorporate into the show. Uh, We're going to go with a segment called Troy's Picks. We're going to start trying to ramp that thing up full throttle for football season but we're going to do a couple things you know in meantime and in between time but today we actually want to talk about the negro baseball what what not negro. nominations so, what like so it's, it's this is like monumental man this okay. is this is the first time in history that major league baseball has recognized the stats and the history from the Negro Leagues mm-hmm. and, and the importance to that. First of all, shout out to Major League Baseball because this is something that I think the fans, the public, our nation, you know, has wanted for years. Mm-hmm. Because I think if you think back, you know, the, 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 the idea that uh, minorities, African Americans, didn't have the ability to even play in, the, in Major League Baseball. Like it was a rule that y'all couldn't even be on the team. Right. So just to think about where we came from and where we are now, uh, right. when you talk about pro sports in general, but especially Major League Baseball, that's a huge monument mm-hmm. man. for them. To, for them to recognize that, you know what, these these men played a lot of baseball games, just like Major Leagues did. There was some really good competition. And, and quite frankly, those records should have been recognized. Should be. So Josh Gibson is now recognized as the all time leading hitter. Um, in terms of batting average for a season, mm-hmm. um, he he he's that, that record probably will never be moved again. He averaged three seventy two, you know, over the course of a whole season, man, and that's 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 a record that his family shout out to them. You know, they now get to look at them record books and, and talk about you know from and, and and great. First of all, we're talking about Josh Gibson. You know, this man's been passed on for for a number of years, and he played back in the forties and the fifties. Right, mm-hmm. right. So from Buena Vista, Georgia, might I add? Yeah, yeah. Right, Georgia boy. Georgia boy. <laughs> but you know, if you think about it like this, man, if you put him in the same game with Babe Ruth, right? Because they was at the same time. Mm-hmm. Do you think he would have been less of an athlete, you know, in those games? I don't. No, and that's one of the main reasons why they wouldn't put him on the field with Babe Ruth. You know what I'm saying? Because he would have showed his ass up. Right. I think he would have been hitting home runs. I think he'd have been knocking the shit out the baseball. And, and first of in all, that game just like he, he was in baseball shape. Yeah, right. that's that's one. That's first right. and foremost. Yeah. He looked very fucking athletic. Right, right. right. So did Hank Aaron. Yeah. yeah. So you, you know. know, and 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 so you know Ty Cobb and some of those. And I'm not taking anything away from those guys at all, but I think it's only fair that uh, the records have been recognized. I think because they played at the same levels. Yeah, they did. It wasn't like the competition was no different. You know, when you look at Satchel Paige on the mound in the Negro Leagues, I think Satchel Paige pitched pro baseball until he was like 60 years old. That's yeah. crazy. And they did more with less. That's crazy. They yeah. did a lot exactly. more with less. Right. Exactly. So, it, you know, where in the major in the major league baseball during those times, a, a starting pitcher may pitch, you know, five, six innings. Mm-hmm. He may throw the ball 80 times, 90 times. This man throwing the ball 700 times. Yeah. And he going back to back to back. Yeah. Starting four, five days in a row. Yeah. So so now let me ask a question because I'm not a baseball guy. I've recently started trying to immerse myself in that because my daughter works with the Braves and we go to games and we meet people and we talk about shit. But do you think like because the rules are different now or the rules were different then that he still would have been able to compete in today's era and hold oh, that record? Absolutely. Okay. Without a question, because at the end of the day, baseball is still baseball. It okay. hasn't changed. You got to throw the ball, itself. somebody got to hit it. Yeah. Right? And Josh Gibson had the ability to hit the ball. Mm-hmm. You know, not just hit the ball far, but consistently hit the ball. To bat 372 over the course of an entire season, that means for every three times you at bat, mm-hmm. you getting two hits. At least. That's not heard of. Okay. Like there's there, that that those those are records that I don't think will ever be broken again. And and the, and the pitches were still the same. The speed, the same, yeah, same stuff. Changed. I mean, it's off speed pitches. It's fastballs. Now, 
granted, over time, the pitchers have become a little more creative. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, it's still baseball. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and if and you take out, especially if you take out the steroid era, we can't we can't include that. Yeah, well, it's that actually was, included because Barry it? Bonds is on the list as well. Okay. okay. So Barry Bonds is, is still on that list, you know. But at the end of the day, Josh Gibson, Josh Gibson is number one. Yeah. You know, Satchel Paige is in the top fifty in terms of pitchers, mm-hmm. um, and I think part of that is because they just can't find enough of his actual history. Right. You know, but he's now in the top fifty. You know, in in history. Mm-hmm. Of, of of actual picture pitchers mm-hmm. in Major League Baseball, which is that's huge. Because I said, you know, Satchel Page played baseball literally till he was in his fifties. Yeah. You know, and to be a pitcher and to be able to throw a baseball as many times he did, as long as he did, man, that's incredible. Now, but, but my, my thing is, I've always struggled with the with the steroid era, like you brought up. Okay, I get it. <clears throat> it might make you stronger. Well, it makes you stronger, makes you probably a little more athletic. But when it comes to baseball. How the hell does steroids help you hit that damn ball? You, you, people don't understand what comes into play when you're trying to hit a fucking ball at damn near 100 miles an hour with a stick. Yeah, steroids can't help you do that. So oh, yes, I've always yes, struggled with. Oh that. yes, it will. Uh, sir, Barry Bonds was hitting the bitch out of the stadium. Uh, okay, okay, hitting it out. <laughs> it it has it to has come walk. across the plate. Yeah. I understand, but it increases your hand and eye coordination, too. And it also increases your strength. Your, your bat swing is Hand and eye coordination. Yeah, Absolutely. it makes you more alert. More, and it, makes and you more and it certainly it. increases your bat swing. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know. And, I mean, and, you literally have people in boats in San Francisco Bay. Yeah, wait. Yeah, yeah, the bitch in the Bay, bro. I've seen that. That's some Flintstone shit. Yeah. It definitely it enhanced everything, no doubt. Yeah. It definitely did. It enhanced and then, it all. And then it also helped them recover faster. Right. You know, from so injuries they could and be shit more like that. athletic yeah, and be, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, I guess. But yeah. it is an art, man, to be able to stand at that mound, you know, and I, I've, again, I, I've had some experiences where I've been on Major League Baseball stadiums and been on the field and, 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 and you know, to actually see how far, first of all, you know, that 90 feet, it, it's not that far it's away. Not. And And when you got a guy 6'5", 6'6", six, 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 you know, on top of the mound, it almost feels like by the time he released the ball, his his hand is damn near at the plate. Damn near, you know. So you gotta to be able to be a hitter in Major League Baseball in the just period is mm-hmm. is is a thing, right? But to be able to hit at three seventy two, yeah, it's just crazy, yeah. You know, so I am again shout out to Major League Baseball for being able to to to, to recognize and, and and finally make right. You know, and put them put them records in the history books, mm-hmm. so those families can actually send. You know, can enjoy and see their loved ones in them yeah. records because they was right. Yeah, yeah, been yeah. There. No and, and I've always struggled with that too, man. Because it's like, are these records really records? Because a lot of these old records, we weren't allowed to play, and I'm mm-hmm. talking right. about black people. Right. So are they even valid? Well, you know what I'm saying. I'm I mean, talking the about competition was still good. You know what I'm saying. They just they just didn't allow us to play, but they still was playing at a high level. Yeah, you know. So I will respect that yeah. part. Yeah, I mean, baseball is different than any other sport, anyway. You know, when it comes to that. Now you talk about football and basketball. That's different. Right. If the athletic, you know, if the athletes that's on the field ain't up to par, mm-hmm. then you got one good dude. Yeah, he gonna run the shit out of everybody else. You right. see what I'm saying? But imagine, say, like. Pistol Pete and back in those days. You know what I mean? Now, I, well, maybe not Pistol Pete because he would have been fired any era. But them guys that, like, Bill Russell and Will Chamberlain was going against, yeah. man, them dudes was far inferior. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Man, speaking of, of Bill Russell and, and some of them, man, um, you know, we got basketball going on. Yeah, yep. yep, that's We're right. We're getting that's ready right. to have the final start. Um, that's right. Boston Celtics, you know, they're going to host game one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dallas Mavericks uh, It's going to be in Boston. Mm-hmm. Coming down, I think the first game starts on Saturday. Um my personal pick, I think. Hold on, hold on. Wait one second. I don't mean to cut you off. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the portion of the co- show we call Troy's Picks. Picks, picks, <laughs> No, picks, I, don't, picks, I, picks. I don't want to make my picks yet. But okay. I, I'm, all I'm right, just all saying, right. I, think, I, think, I think Boston um, is the better team. Okay. okay. There's a couple things that, you know, I think helps them out. I noticed during the course of basketball season, uh, a couple things jumped out to me that, that's pretty alarming. Sketcher mm. got a basketball shoe. That's cr- is that the one that uh, uh, my boy had on? Kyrie had on. No, what, what shoe was that? He had on a that's moccasin. A he had on a yeah, Native a Nike, American. It is shoe. a moccasin, but at least it's a Nike. <laughs> but the, the, the young brother Terrence Mann played for the Clippers. Mm-hmm. I kept I'm watching the game. I'm like, man, why in the hell this boy fall every damn play? Mm-hmm. He had on a sketch catch. <laughs> Your ass playing in the NBA. And Skechers. Yeah. Oh, 
So that's why the Clippers ain't in the playoffs. Because <laughs> your boy had on Skechers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they go with the Payless. Yeah. And then I had to go down there to, I had to, you know, I had to go look at one of his teammates. And I said, well, goddamn, the claw. Okay. You know, this boy was balling out in Toronto. Come to the Clippers, they balling out. But he kept getting hurt. I said, well, damn, why he can't stay healthy? Mm-hmm. You know why? Mm. He got them goddamn New Balance. Oh, no. okay. Not the place. NBs. Word to the wise. November Bravo. <laughs> if no you are parent of an aspiring basketball player, don't bring no sketches home. <laughs> nah. Don't bring your son no New Balance <laughs> basketball shoes home. Oh. Because we going to clown them. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, I look at somebody playing basketball and sketches in New Balance. It's just like somebody playing basketball in church shoes. <laughs> but, Troy, you got to think about it. Think about it like Will them. They played in them fucking Chuck Taylors. Yeah, but Ooh. everybody had on Chuck Taylors. No Ooh. no ankle support mm, whatsoever. Mm, mm. That's like me and you going to hoop right now and you show up with some Walmart specials. Yeah, but, you know, yeah. I notice a lot of dudes play in low tops. Well, That's not crazy to y'all? They they like, like three-quarter tops. Yeah, mids. But guess mids. what? Them is Nikes. Yeah. Them Those, is Adidas. They're made for basketball. Now, right. let's get to who in the finals right now. If you look at the Boston Celtics, you don't see Jalen Brown running around there with no sketches on. Yeah. No. Guess what he be doing? Slam dunking on jokes. Yeah. <laughs> when you look at the last series, and Minnesota and Dallas was going at it. Mm-hmm. Ant-Man representing Atlanta like a son of a gun. What he wear? He wasn't wearing no damn sketches. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> if you in the NBA finals, and you got on some sketches, your coach going to get fired. I hear you. Oh, That's shit. why ain't none of them in the finals. If you look in the finals right now, we got the Dallas Mavericks and the Boston Celtics. And you going with? I think I'm going to go game by game. I don't give a damn who wins because I ain't got no dog in the fight. Right. But I do think game one, Boston run away with the game one. And here's why I think that. If you look at the last four games, Go dating all the way back to 2023. Boston has won by at least 10 points mm-hmm. every single night. Whether it's in Dallas or in Boston, they flat out kick their ass. Mm-hmm. So I don't think there's going to be any change. I think come Saturday or whatever game one is, I, I give Boston at home advantage. And here's the other thing. Boston is a very, very tough team to beat at home. Mm-hmm. They probably, I, I want to say they got the best home record. It's always been like that, right? It's hard to beat them in, in Boston. Going in that garden is yeah, hard to win. It's a different place. Right. It's, it's, it's just tough to win. So, game one, I, I, I'm i going to lean, you know, to Boston plus six. Because I, I think that right now the books got them six and a half point spread. I think Boston will cover that six and a half point spread at home game one. But I will say this. The Dallas Mavericks don't overlook them. Mm-hmm. Luka Doncic has, has had a triple-double all four of those games that I just mentioned. Mm-hmm. Right. So, the challenge for Boston is going to be how do they stop Luka, right? How do you control? Because not only is he going to score 30 points, but he's capable of getting 10 rebounds and 10 assists. Yeah, triple you know. Doubles. And now you got the moccasin wear, Kyrie Irving, <laughs> with them damn moccasins <laughs> on. Boy, we had all Native Americans kicked. Boy, I said, boy, this boy, wow. So and then you got my man Livery. To, is he doing it to prove a point? No, oh, this is his style, man. You know, he, hey, that's just what he do. I don't give a damn what he do. You keep putting 22 points, 23 points in that basket, and yeah. I keep hitting them parlays, you keep on doing what you're that doing. That nigga wear some Jesus sandals out there. I won't give a damn. <laughs> <laughs> you keep doing what you're doing. No Which brings me to my picks. Yeah. Okay. So all I, right. So, I, look. And a quick question about this Tyson and uh, which one he's fighting? He's fighting Jake? Jake. He's Jake. fighting Jake Paul. What do y'all right think now, about that shit? Tyson is um, the underdog. If you go to FanDuel today and make the bet, you can get plus 135 taking Tyson. Really? Which is crazy as hell. Uh, I don't know how the sport books could possibly think Tyson's a loser in this battle, in this bout at any point. How do you make uh, Jake Paul? Uh, negative money mm-hmm. uh, as the as the favorite, which is crazy. My money going to the box with Tyson um, with plus one thirty five, and uh, I'm I'm willing to even put a little bit of a lean um, toward Tyson um, in the first three rounds at one eighty six because at plus one eighty six 
They give they they plus money is one one eighty six with him knocking him out in the first three rounds. Mm. So the sports books is crazy right now. I'm only I'm thinking maybe the sports books are a little nuts to try and draw people to the sport to, the sport, to, right, to make yeah. them bet. But if if you got a chance to take an early bet, I'm definitely taking Mike Tyson. You know for the win at plus one thirty five, and I'm also putting a slight lean on Mike Tyson in the first three rounds at plus one eighty six. Okay. Right. And it's two minute rounds, Vince. right? It's two minute rounds. Two minute rounds. Yeah. Yep. That was smart of him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was smart. That's of him. that's what's going to me. That's what's pushing him over the edge. And I just don't Which, think Jake has been hit like he's not like that. hit by no. Mike Tyson. Well, Tyson Fury found out. Uh, not Tyson Fury, but um, my my guy who just got knocked out last night. Um, man, Ooh. it slipped my mind. My guy from okay. Alabama. Damn, He'll come back to me in a second, night. but he just got knocked the hell out last night. Tyson Fury knocked him out um, the last couple fights, and then he fought, but got a. No, Dante together. Wilder. Wilder. He fought last night. He just got knocked the hell out. God damn right. it! He and fell. I, from and grace. I said it to say the the, the 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 reason that I brought him up is because I think it's the same situation. Mm-hmm. He took on an opponent that he assumed at his age, his stature, that it was going to be an easy fight. And it'll take but one punch. Yeah, yeah, that's all it take. And that one punch scrambled his eggs, mm-hmm. and he out of there. And, yeah. and I'm gonna tell you, man, I play football and I boxed, and boxing is the hardest shit a man can do. A controlled fight for three minutes around yeah. is the hardest shit yeah. you can do in your life, man. Well, you, you gotta be a damn this. fool if you're an internet fighter and you think for any second you're gonna step your ass in that ring with Mike Tyson. Yeah. And and I don't give a damn. He's 57, 58 years old. Don't matter. You got I the skill set. His videos, and um, I'm a little afraid for Jake Paul, man. I, I think he's gonna break his jaw. I think I he will. And 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 part of that is they had a sparring session a couple months back. That's that's what delayed the fight. Mm-hmm. Initially, they were supposed to fight way back early May, mm-hmm. but during the sparring section, literally in the first two or three minutes of sparring, Paul Jake Paul got a concussion. Yeah. So they had to back all that back down. With Tyson? Yeah, Tyson yeah, gave a concussion. Yeah, he's not ready for that shit, man. Whoa. He's not ready for that shit. And my wife reminded me last night, didn't that motherfucker come from the Disney Channel? Yeah. <laughs> oh, the internet fighter, man. And I, yeah. I ain't taking that from, you know, if he, he built up a fan base. Right. He's made himself some money with doing it. And I think he's actually a decent fighter. Yeah. But mm-hmm. you're putting yourself in a situation where now you, you, you've you chunked on one of the greats. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right? And when you call out yep. one of the greats, you know, you put him in a situation where he got to defend his he name and his legacy. Himself. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And you don't yeah. want to put Mike Tyson in that situation. Yeah, That's literally not backed him into back a corner. The wall. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you put him in. You know, you just don't. Again, I'm taking Mike positive money on the fight, and I'm taking Mike positive money on the first three round knockout. Okay. Because I really think he's gonna knock dude the hell out. I, I don't know what round. What? How many rounds they going? Ten. 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 Yeah. Shit. He, yeah. Well, they won't. I think it's eight two-minute rounds. Okay. They won't make it to five. Yeah, It, it won't go to five. five. No, I don't think so either. It won't go to five. And I'm putting it on Mike. Well, I think, I think you know, back to the Boston Celtics and Dallas, I think we will get a full series. Seven um, games. I don't think there's going to be any kind of sweeps. So I, I will give, uh, like I said, the, my, my, my picks for this week, I'm going to start with, I'm going to take Boston plus six and a half. That's Because I believe they're going to, I think they're going to cover the spread. Um, total points probably going to be somewhere in the low 200s. I'm going to take it over. Um, unless it goes, you know, creep somewhere at about 220, I'll, I'll probably lean toward an under there. But if it's anything, you know, 207, 208, at that time, I'm going to definitely take it over. I think Boston is going to slow the game down because Pozinga is going to be back. Mm. And with missing him, you know, these last six, eight weeks, they've been able to play a little bit faster pace because they couldn't rebound as much. Yeah. Him coming back, I think it's going to slow the game down. They control the offensive. And, and they Eagles want him to get acclimated. Yeah. yeah. But I think on the other side of that, Dallas is going to speed it up. So I look for Kyrie Irving to have you know a good game night one. Uh, Lively to have a great game. Uh, I, in fact, he's going to probably be my MVP uh, for the series. Because mm-hmm. I just don't think Boston's got anybody that's going to be able to match up with him well. Okay. You know, Jason Tatum, I think, will have a good series. Uh, I, don't, I don't think Dallas has anybody... Um, they can. They, I think they'll do it, you know, by team. You know, there will be a McDaniel's. There are going to be several guys checking him, mm-hmm. but I still give him mid twenty points. You know, seven eight rebounds a night. 
So I think it's going to be an interesting series. I really do. I really think it's going to be an interesting series. So if, if I'm going to the book with y'all, I'm telling y'all now, I'm taking Boston uh, to cover the spread. I'm taking the over. I'm also taking Luka over his points and rebounds. I'm going to take Jalen Brown over his points. And I'm going to take Jason Tatum over his points. So those are going to be my picks for this first week. And as we get the lines out, you know, we'll be able to get them to y'all a little bit sooner. But that's what I'm looking for uh, this first week, right, y'all. Those, those are Troy's picks. He's not telling you to bet. No. He's saying those are his picks. Yeah, if, I, if I had to bet, this is what I would bet is what I'm telling y'all. If yeah, I had to take it to yeah. the line, this is what I would do. Right on, right on. All right, all right. Well, Brother Bench, you got anything sports-related, sports my related, brother? My prayers are with Jake. <laughs> boy, he about to beat your ass, bro. He about to get his ass handed to hell. No doubt. Yeah, no doubt. I believe so. Mm-hmm. And I don't have a dog in the fight with the Celtics in the matter. I wanted to see Minnesota, but it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like Ant Man. You know, everybody I mean? like him, dude. Yeah. Everybody like that yeah. kid. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, the baller, man. Yeah, and, and it, it, the per, the personality we see on social media and the television is fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. I don't, we don't know him personally, right? But what he gives us, man, I, I love it. I love it. So my boy Big Victor Alexander, if you you know, if you watching, if you get a chance to check the show out, Cyclones, I know y'all checking it out. But Big Vic coached him in high school. Okay. So Big Vic used to tell us, man, I got this kid, that's the truth. Right? Mm-hmm. And and he went to a small private school. Okay. And he like, I got this kid, that's the truth. But he wasn't really getting recruited as much. Man, become his junior year, I think. Everybody was on him. Yeah. But he was a hometown kid, and he stuck to Georgia. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He stayed his ass home. But shout out to Big Vic for, for, for you know, bringing that boy together. Big Vic used to be an Atlanta Hawk. Okay. okay. You know, he played here in the NBA. So he had an opportunity to keep his hands on the young man, as a, you know, to, to mold his, his, his mind, his career, you know, help him think about school and the things yeah. that was important. So shout out to Victor Alexander, man. You did that thing, homeboy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, y'all. Well, we appreciate y'all tuning in. And like always, this is the Husband Show Podcast where we band together and navigate this thing called marriage through love, life, and laughs. I am Perry. And I'm Trouble T. And your boy Vince. We out of this mug. Peace. Peace.